Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at BeQuil once again. Uh, we've looked at BeQuil a little bit in the past around using the BeQuil Query Builder to help us create our queries that uh, we use to make some simple summaries on our PXs. But if you know what's actually going on inside of a BeQuil query, you can un unlock a lot more of the functionality that's available to you um, that you might not know exists if you're strictly relying on the BeQuil query builder uh, user interface. So let's jump into a PowerPoint now where I will break down the individual parts and uh, hopefully um, make it a little bit more uh, comfortable for you to use going forward. One thing to note is I'm just going to be blabbing here in this video. There's not going to be any Niagara moving around or anything like that. Uh, we're only going to be in PowerPoint, but I think this is a really important topic to cover. So uh, hopefully you stick along. So let's jump in and take a look. All right, so if you're not familiar with BeQuil, um, we're just going to I'll touch on it really quickly here at the beginning. I'm assuming that most people already know what BeQuil is, uh, but you might just not be comfortable with the syntax and actually writing it yourself. So if you don't know what BeQuil is, um, it's a really easy way for you to query all of the data that's in your station um, and display it on something like a summary page. So if you had a whole bunch of VAVs, you could very quickly... Uh, grab all of the space temps and maybe set points from those VAVs and throw them onto a table without you having to manually go in and build out that table yourself. It's also really handy if you're a program service user um, and you want to make uh, changes globally across your station. Uh, BeQuil is used to pull up those individual points that maybe you want to do your uh, bulk changes on. Uh, knowing how to use BeQuil and write it manually yourself makes this a whole lot easier. So let's jump into a query and what it looks like. So uh, BeQuil is the Baja query language. We are writing queries when we work with BeQuil. Um, there are a bunch of different parts within the syntax of a BeQuil query, and this is all of them. So we've got a base ord, we've got a projection, we've got an extent, predicate, having, and order by. We're gonna skip over the having as we go through things here. Um, doesn't really have a lot of use cases in the typical day-to-day um, -day usage of query, of, of BeQuil, excuse me, but it might be something that we wrap back to if uh, people have interest in it. So if you want to see that, leave it in the comments down below. Um, so that's what the individual parts are. And then we've got an example query here at the bottom that uh, what it's doing is it's grabbing all of the space temps that are in our demo supervisor uh, and showing them on a table with uh, the name of the zone that they're in. So we'll break that down a little bit more at the end once we know what these individual parts are, but I uh, just wanted to introduce that now before we go in and break it down. So the first piece of a uh, BeQuil query is what's called a base ord. This is the starting point for our query, and it narrows the scope of the query. Everything that the query is going to look for will live inside of this uh, folder, object, uh, whatever it is. So in our example use case here, we can see that I'm drilling into the drivers, Niagara network, and then our uh, office JSE. that's our starting point. So everything the query looks for is going to be within that Brody office uh, object on the supervisor. It's also important to note that you want to um, narrow this scope as much as you can. Uh, Keeping it to your whole station will make the query uh, take a lot longer to operate. Um, not as efficient. You're wasting CPU resources, yada, yada, yada. Narrow this as much as you can uh, for your user's sake as well as for your JSON and the CPU cycle's sake. Next is our projection. This is where we're selecting what we want to have in our columns of the uh, query that's, or the, the, the return of the query. So uh, it's used 
relative to some other parts that we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, but in this case, I'm looking for the zone, which is the uh, parent.display name of the space temps that I've found. And then I'm also going to output or select the uh, out.value of our space temp. Um, and we're going to call that space temp. The syntax here allows us to define a custom name. We don't need it, but the as zone and the as space temp are what are defining our uh, column names on the returned uh, results of the query. But you'll see that more in depth at the end once we circle back around and see what the example is actually doing. Next is the extent. This is uh, always uh, starts with the from. So we're uh, looking at the results from objects that are of this type. In this uh, example, we're looking at um, only objects that are numeric points. Uh, this is using the Niagara types, all the Niagara types. So if you don't know what the type of the object is that you're looking for, um, you can find that type by going to the slot sheet of the object above what you're looking for. So if you're looking for an alarm extension, you would go to the slot sheet of the point that that alarm extension is on. And on that slot sheet, you could find what the actual type is of the alarm extension. Next is our predicate. This is where we're doing our Boolean expressions. This is where we're doing like the typical filtering that you maybe are used to seeing uh, in the realm when you do like a find on like a Word document or something like that. That's the kind of uh, filtering that we're doing here. So in our example, we're, we're looking for the numeric points where the display name is space temp. Uh, we also have the ability to do like greater than, less than, all the operators that you can think of uh, for our Boolean expressions. And we also have the ability to use wildcards uh, using the like operator. So instead of the equal sign, we could put like here and then put a percent sign in our string that we're looking for. So if you wanted to look for all of your zones, you could say zone percent and it would look for anything that has a name that starts with zone and it doesn't care what's after it. As long as it starts with zone, it'll return it. And then our last piece here is we have the ability to order our results. Uh, we can order it based on pretty much anything we want. In this example use case, I'm ordering it based on the out that value of our space temp and I'm doing a descending order. We can do ascending or descending, and that's the syntax, or excuse me, the, um, the keywords that you wanna use for ascending and descending. So we circle back around now. We know what the individual parts are. Let's look at the uh, results of this example uh, as a whole. So we are narrowing our scope to just be the um, office JACE in this use case. Um, as I mentioned, always want to narrow that scope as much as you can. And then I'm going to skip over the select. I'm going to say we're looking for control points that are numeric, so our numeric points, where the display name is space temp. So that's the base of our query is we're going to pull out all of the points, the numeric points that have uh, space temp as the name. And then we're going to select we're going to show this data based on those points. So we're going to, in our first column here, our zone column, we're going to show the uh, parent.display name because everything is based on uh, what comes out of our the from and the where here. Um, we're going based on the space temp itself. So the display name is, would give us space temp. We don't want that. We want the zone name. So we have to go up a level again, use our parent. If uh, you're familiar with B format, that's what you were using here. Um, and then we're setting the alias for this column or the custom name for the column with the as, as zone. So that's why we get zone here. And so that's why we have all of our zones. And then for the actual space temp itself, um, we could just show uh, the out, but a little bit nicer and cleaner to do our out that value. And that's what we're showing here. And again, we're setting a custom name for that uh, header 
of the column with the space temp. And then it's all ordered based on the space temp's actual value. So we're starting with our highest value and we are descending down from that highest value. So that is breakdown of a Beagle query. Hopefully it's helpful for you. Um, definitely a lot, a lot of things that you can do with Beagle in Niagara. So it's very good to have a at least a basic knowledge of what's going on in your uh, Beagle queries. Highly recommend you just go in there and mess around with uh, the query builder and uh, writing out some of these queries in your uh, Niagara stations uh, because you're not going to hurt anything by doing it. You're, you're only querying data. You're not manipulating anything in any way. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have anything else that you want to see related to BQL, um, did I uh, go over something too quickly that you want to see in more depth, uh, you can leave those down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.